Day two of Google Next 2018 is officially in the books. This is Ben and Matt with Linux Academy, and these are our thoughts on the day two keynote. So compared to yesterday, there were a ton of new announcements across both G Suite and Google Cloud. Let's start off with G Suite. There are a lot of new services and integrations announced that really had the theme of G Suite playing nicely with your other products. So for example, the cloud search service, which has been around for a little over a year and I am personally a huge fan of, will now be able to index and search within your third party applications, not just G Suite, including on-premises. You kind of think of it as Google search for literally your entire business. Going along with the same theme, Hangouts Meet, which is Google's video chat service, is also going to play along nicely with many other video chat platforms, such as WebEx and Skype as well. So you really see the theme of more integration, more cooperation with other third-party services, so you can make G Suite your all-in-one service. So moving on now to Google Cloud itself, Google, again, and no surprise, talks more about many other new advances and features with Google Kubernetes Engine. What did you think about some of the new announcements today? I'm, I'm really impressed with Knative. This is a really cool uh, product that they're working on in collaboration with some other partners that is going to allow us to build and deploy containers in Kubernetes on Kubernetes. Uh, one of their services, which is their marketplace for add-ons, is actually running on Knative, so this is really cool. They're not only building tools for us to use as consumers, but they're also using them themselves and finding some of the problems and pain points so they can make it better for the rest of us. You know, one of the funny things I just realized was the two big trends in cloud computing today is number one, containers and Kubernetes, and number two, serverless. Knative was almost kind of asking, why not both? Moving on to another big Google topic of machine learning and AI, Google Cloud announced a new feature within BigQuery called BigQuery ML. So how is this exactly different than the way we used to do it? So the way we used to do it is if you had a massive amount of data in BigQuery, you'd have to export it out of BigQuery and then run your machine learning on it. With BigQuery ML, you can run machine learning on the live data in BigQuery without having to take it out, which both improves performance and it makes it a lot simpler because the data is there, we're not on the source data, and off you go. Hmm. Moving on to database announcements, it was also announced that coming this fall, you'd have the ability to run licensed versions of Oracle for your Oracle database workloads on Compute Engine, which I'm sure is welcome news to a lot of organizations that are very deep into the Oracle ecosystem. But wait, there's more. Google also announced new features with the now rebranded Google Maps platform. Ben, what did you think about some of those new announcements? So this may seem like there's not much there, but it's very exciting to me as a game developer and a game enthusiast so one of the things I got to see in a breakout session was very cool. They have this uh, concept that's going to allow for AR, and it's a, an API that's going to allow you as a game developer to find places all over the world that are appropriate for AR-style interactive games. So this is very neat. You can filter, maybe you want only uh, restaurants, and you only want like public spaces where people can play. So you can filter by those criteria they're partnering with Unity, which is very exciting. I get to see a demo where they went into Unity, they showed some cityscapes that you could skin, so you can see a nice overlay of the city. You could actually like walk around the real city, and if you're using some sort of AR device right now, it's probably going to be a mobile device, but soon HoloLens or Magic Leap, and as you look up, you can see this augmented world. So they're doing some interesting stuff and laying the foundations for some really cool technologies to come. That's really impressive. I'm sure we'll see some pretty amazing games coming out with that in the near future. Yeah, they showed uh, four in the demo today, and uh, one of them only available in Japan. But the other three, uh, one of them was Jurassic World. So you can kind of picture it as maybe a Pokemon, but with dinosaurs. So you train up your dinosaurs, and then you can fight them against each other. That sounds like way too much fun. <laughs> Finally, some big announcements with the Cloud IoT service and functionality is the introduction of the Edge TPU, which is a miniaturized version of the Tensor Processing Unit that you can add to your own Internet of Things devices, which will essentially give you localized machine learning on your sensors themselves. This could be a huge game changer in that it offers the ability for your machine learning sensors for higher performance at a lower cost 
and lower power consumption as well. Development kits are coming out in the very near future, and I really can't wait to see what new advancements will be available in IoT technology with some of this new tech that's coming out very soon. That wraps up our thoughts on the Day 2 keynote. Again, this has been in Matt with Linux Academy. It's been a pleasure to talk with you. Tune in next week for the start of our weekly Google Cloud Weekly, and we hope to see you then.